Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today, something a little different. I'm going to be going over a project build that's, you know, already done, instead of building one here with you. Today, we're going over my 92 GMC Vandera, which is basically a Chevy G20. And... I will be showing you how I took a regular, outdated conversion van and made it into the most epic camper van known to man. So the reason I'm doing this video is a couple reasons. One, when I built this van, I had a lot of questions that no one on the internet could answer for me. So I had to find them myself, so I thought I'd share them with you. And two, this is to promote Mook's channel, Junkyard Mook. Uh, there's going to be a video on her channel of us taking this exact van on a trip. We go to a junkyard, we go to some caves, we sleep in it in places we probably shouldn't have slept at in parking lots. So you can go check that out on her channel. There'll be a link in the description, probably a button up here or here. I don't know, I get really confused when the screen's flipped around. Somewhere up there is a button, hit it. So you may be asking, Kevin, why the hell did you choose the GMC van over the Ford or the Dodge? These guys had the best transmissions of the era. And the TBI fuel injection system is so rudimentary and simple that it remains dependable for a fuel injection system. And a lot of people argue that, ah, uh, fuel injection systems are always dependable. But when they break down, you, you're broken. That's it. You gotta find like parts and stuff. You can't really rig anything up. The TBI, you could take it off and put a carburetor on and keep going if you really wanted to. So, there's a lot of complaints about the TBI, but this one's giving me no troubles. So that's awesome. This van has 155,000 miles on it. Eventually, that driveline will die. And I will put an LS in it at that point, just to stay really simple and, you know, modern and reliable. I'm a Ford guy, and I will come out to say the Chevy transmissions of this era are better. Their locking torque converter and overdrive transmissions are way superior to a Ford made. So, as you can see on the outside, this is a really solid van. They're pretty, they're, they're like, don't get me wrong, it's a big van, but these things are super easy to drive. I'll have my friends hop in it to drive it all the time just because it's fun, and they don't usually get to drive a van, and it works out fine. Like, this thing drives like a car. Honestly, of all the vehicles I own, this is the easiest vehicle to park because of where the tires are in relation to where you sit and the turning radius is amazing. So as you can see, there's a few reasons why I chose the GMC or the Chevy van over the Ford or the Dodge. Um, the Ford's EFI was not as dependable and the Dodge just never made transmissions that worked. I don't know if they even have figured that out by now. I don't know, maybe they did. But this one's pretty base model, just one switch for the lights, not much going on. Uh, this was made by Autoform, which is a subdivision of Glaval, which made conversion vans back in the day. There's like a thousand companies that did it. Uh, you'll see in Mook's video that we went through a junkyard that had like a hundred something of these vans there. And I never found a repeating, I, sorry, correction, I found two Winnebago conversion vans. That was it. All the other ones were non-repeating company names it was crazy but autoform likes to say the future was yesterday and put wood on everything i don't know why but this whole damn van is made of wood <laughs> this is a 1992 modeled after 1982 so that's fun but it does make things pretty easy to work on because all you need is a drill and wood screws and you can take the whole thing apart right so Let's move on to the fun stuff on how I made this the most epic conversion van to ever be conversion vaned. Alright, so coming inside the van I followed one rule. It was what would have I wanted when I was traveling across the country if my parents were driving up front. That answer is an Xbox and a TV. And we have just that, an Xbox and a TV. Now, behind me, since I'm old now, and I like to, you know, not sleep curled up in a ball on the floor in the back seat, we have a queen size bed that's been built on a wood two x four frame into the back where the seat would have been back in the day. But I don't need that anymore. So that got taken out and this bed got put in. This just has a futon mat just on it right now. But I will be putting a memory foam pad that I can cut to size later. 
Uh, there's tons of room down here for storage yet. I have never had an issue fitting all my stuff here. Right over here, we have a fire extinguisher in case any emergencies arise. Now, if you come back onto the bed and lay down, you'll notice, oh, hello there. Large flat screen TV integrated into the thing right above your face. Yep, that's right. And this is also wired into that Xbox up there as well as the coax antenna. So both of these TVs are wired to the same thing. And I ran all the cords up here above these strip lights. So there's an HDMI splitter that goes to each and then there's a coax splitter that goes to each. So if I come back here to this drawer, to my inverter, and I hit a go. So now, I can lay down in bed. And watch whatever I want on the telly. Let's go. Across the rest of the state, plenty of hazy sunshine and a it is not 75. It's like 90 out. Tonight we are going to see some thunderstorms break out right around 10 p.m. Oh, More good. Expected overnight with heavy rainfall, thunder, lightning, potentially some large hail. And oh, should great. Be through by early tomorrow. Oh, the day tomorrow. yeah, that's and large hail. That's fine. Everything's fine. There's that TV up here. Same story. <laughs> this one I don't have a remote for, but you can reach the button on the back. Ideally, you have a remote. Oh, there you have it. Yeah, that's that's what it is right now. Good times. And both of these run off the Xbox, which is now on and now back off. All of this is being run off that inverter. Now there's like a 10 gauge wire running back here and that one's too small. I actually have some voltage drop. You can't see it, but this probably only reads like 10 volts right now with the van being off because of the resistance to the wire. But the wire, the inverter is wired directly to the battery. And then I have this little power strip. This one goes to that TV back here. This one goes to a cut up extension cord, which comes down. Through all this, all this, all this wood just comes off with a few screws. Don't be afraid to take it off. You're gonna have to take it off anyway at some point. So just get that stuff out of there. But I had to take most of this off. Uh, I took out these window panels. That gave me a lot of access to run this wiring. So that extension cord comes down through here to this GFCI outlet. So if you know anything about wiring AC, if your first outlet in the series is a GFCI, that makes all consecutive outlets a GFCI outlet because it'll trip here, as you can see. There's tripped, there's back on. Moving forward, 120 volt AC, 12 volt constant DC. So this is when I am sleeping at night and all I have to run is my phone. And it's not worth running a huge inverter at like 1500 watts and all this stuff just to charge your phone. So here and there, we have constant 12 volt DC that's always on all the time. And there's no load on it, so it's not a battery draw. Up here, I've hardwired some DC fans on both sides. There is our second outlet for AC. So when we're driving along, someone wants to charge their phone or run their computer, all I gotta do is come back here, hit the switch, or actually I'm gonna get a different inverter at some point and wire a remote switch up front so I can just flip it there. But I can turn that on and then you'll have 120 AC there. And that's the same extension cord goes to there, goes to there, and then it branches off up to here where there's another small um, power strip. And the Xbox is plugged into it and this TV is all plugged into it. So all this is run off that inverter and they will all run off battery power, but Let's say I want to watch a movie or play Xbox for a few hours or I want to put a portable air conditioner right here and plumb it out this window. The battery is not enough to power that. So what we do, turn our inverter off, 
unplug this. This is basically just a distribution block to make this process really easy. Instead of a switch, I have a cord. You plug this into here, and all this is, is an extension cord that runs right here, down that pillar, and out the back door. If I were to say pull into a camping spot, or a parking lot, or somewhere where I had access to 120 power, I simply throw my back doors open, grab my extension cord, plug this guy in, plug this end into any conventional house outlet that runs 120, and bam. Now my entire van, all the accessories that are AC powered are running off of an external power source. So I'm not touching my battery at all. That is plugged into the wall. Like I said, this routed up through there into that box in the back. This is what is called shore power for those of you who may be fancy. Here's the other end of that, literally just an extension cord into my distribution block, AKA a small power strip and then that runs like I said to each outlet and to all my accessories so if I wanted right now I could turn anything on as you can see but there are a few things in here that are strictly DC like these lights which I should mention factory these lights will not come on unless the key is on which is dumb because if you're laying in bed and you want to turn a light on you gotta go turn the key on so I, back here, if you take this panel out, if yours has the locks, um, some of these have constant power, such as the lock circuit, and you can just splice them together, because that, the wiring for these lights runs across this side, so you can just splice them together, and then you'll have DC power all the time, which is great. But these lights only run off DC, these only run off DC, and these fans are only ran off DC. So if I want to run the fans because it's hot, obviously I'm still going to kill my battery. So I need a solution for that, right? Aha! Look at that. Back there, what, what is that now that it's plugged in? Ta-da! A three amp charger. So at any point that you plug this in, you just plug that in and you trickle charge the battery of the van while it is being externally run off of AC power. So at this point, like I said, I can put a portable air conditioner in here, plummet to the corner of that window, and condition this whole van with like 8,000 BTUs, and be happy. So basically to do any of this, you just run this extension cord in here from outside. I can go short power, battery power, and then that will change where you're drawing power from. Uh, this little trickle charger is also great, because if I'm like working outside on the Rambler, and I want to listen to music, I'll open the doors up on the van, listen to it but I might be worried about my battery going dead after eight hours nope just plug the extension cord in plug this in and it trickle charges itself good to go hook this all back up the way it's supposed to be that could be a cleaner install but honestly it's not bad there's this screen laid into that piece I just fold it over the, the cloth there that screen fit right into that old hole the Xbox Oh, excuse me, the Xbox was the same size as the VCR. AC, DC power right next to each other. Queen size bed. Lots of the color blue. TBI 350 700R4. And it's a three quarter ton. So technically you could tow with it. So that's going to be it for the tour of the van. Uh, if you want to see this thing driving around, go check out Mook's channel. Junkyard Mook. We took this to some caves and a junkyard and looked at a whole bunch of other vans. Just like I mentioned before. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer. Next video, we will be going back to revivals with, I believe, this butte. So keep your eyes out for that. I'll see you guys next time on Junkyard Digs. Peace. Make sure you go subscribe to Mook, by the way, if I haven't mentioned that three times already. Peace.